I want to know whether your father is still alive. Uh, he died in 1975. 1975? Five, yeah. Okay. What's his name? Suleiman Junkum Jamni. What about your mom's name? Fatu Boja. Is she still alive? Yes, she's alive. Can you see her? Hmm? Can you see her after? She's in Bacau. She's not here. She's in Bacau. Maybe Apple will have a special program for that. How many of you did your father have? On the side of my mother, I'm the only one, the first and the last. But uh, I had four other brothers of the same mother. And another brother, who also is the only son of his mother, or the only child of his mother. He's the one who came immediately after me, and he's the last in the family. He's still going to school. How old was your father before he died? Maybe 65. Not more. Or 65. Who were you named after? I was named after the imam of the village, uh, who then happened to be the my father's best friend, you know, uh, he was called Yahya Jalo. In fact, here they called me Yahya Jalo, not Yahya Jami. Because I was named after the Imam of the village, who was the, my father's best friend. And uh, who incidentally told my, who predicted uh, that uh, My dad will have another wife, and that wife will have only one son. And that, he, well, what he told my dad was, he was told by some something, in a dream, that the child should be named Yahya. And then my dad asked him, why should my child be named after him? He said, no, 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 not because I'm called Yahya, but I was told in a dream that this particular child should be named Yahya. Then my father said, since you are my best friend, I may as well give him the surname Jalo. So they said, okay, yeah, yeah, Jalo. You know. <coughs> um, so how old are you? I was born in 1965, so let's see how good at maths are you. 65. 33. Good. 30. Me, 25th. May 25th. How long did you stay here? Well, what do you mean? Since when you were born, how long did you stay here? From 65 to 1976. He left when uh, my dad, a year after my dad died, he transferred to another village called Mayok, which is about 20 kilometers from here, which is on the highway. Do your, those brothers whom you said work on farm? Well, uh, unfortunately, two of them are no longer alive. So I have only two brothers. Two brothers. And uh, three cousins, yeah. Uh, yeah. They are taking care of the, uh, the family farm in Mayok, where the rest of the family is staying at the moment. So who's taking care of your mom in Bakau? I am taking care of my mom. When you are a child, did you finish your education before you joined me? Yes, Gambia High School. Which university did you attend? I didn't attend any university. What I attended is a, a military academy. How many, how many years do you spend in the military? Uh, 84 to 94, 10 years. Mm. And that to 96, because I retired from the army in 96. Um, when did you get married? <laughs> uh, 94. 94? Yeah. Did your parents like the idea of you joining the army? 
Well, uh, my mom didn't like it, but I didn't inf also inform her before going, but I know she wouldn't have liked it. Because I, I'm a, a only child, and you know, there's a lot of superstition tied to going into the army, you know. People like to believe that, you know. When you go into the army, you are going to die, so <laughs> if you have one son, the only, your only child, you not want him to go to the army. And that's why, that's one reason why I didn't inform her before going, because I know she would have objected to it. She knew I was in the army after I graduated, mm -hmm. uh, passed out of the training. Eh? Who wants to live here? <laughs> ah, you all want to live here? Good. But it's difficult, you see, conditions are difficult. It's wet, it's, you have bees, you have everything, and you have only work to do. Do your brothers go to school when you were going out? No, uh, I was the, my elder brother, who was next to the eldest, uh, went, he was the only one who went to school. And after him, I went. And uh, after me, the last son of, uh, the last brother, who is still going to school, is attending GTTI. Um, was paying school fees um, for your brother was a problem to your father, or what? Why didn't they go to school? No, no, no. Uh, by the time I was going to, I started primary school, my bro uh, elder brother was already a teacher. In fact, he was then attending Gambia College. I, I went to school five years after my brother started teaching. And by the time I was going to school, he already started uh, uh, teacher training. I did teacher training college uh, to become a qualified teacher. Yes. Why did you decide to join the army? That's a good question. Well, that's a tough question now. <laughs> well, I had options, you know. Okay, there, are, there have been a lot of things that I didn't like then. I never wanted to go into the army in the first place. Uh, and then uh, came the confederation and I saw the way people were being treated by Senegalese soldiers, you know. I was supposed to go to Roosevelt University. I had all my admission documents, I was given a student ID number, I was assigned a roommate and I was supposed to live by me. It was supposed to be my birthday. Uh, my birthday. But then uh, I was wondering if I had to leave, what will happen to this country and where the foreign troops were treating people. And uh, it came out of an incident where I visited a friend and some Senegalese soldiers came and they were asking for a girl. And the girl happened to turn out to be somebody's wife. And in our presence there, they were told that the one they were asking for was not a girl, in actual fact, was somebody's wife. And they said they didn't care. After all, they are the ones who saved us from Puka, and I told them, no, that's not the case. So we had a law, and I told them, look, anybody can be a soldier. And if I may become a better soldier, become a better soldier than you are. He was a, a lieutenant, and the sergeant got up and said, don't you know, you're talking to my boss, he's a lieutenant. I told him I didn't care. I used to have a lot of problems with them. So in fact, we mobilized the boys and kicked them out of the compound. And uh, the owner of the compound was very scared. He said, if you don't leave, the, they send those small jeeps to come and pick us up. So we decided to wait for them at the gate of the compound. And uh, the lieutenant stuck to his words and said he was going to teach us a lesson. So he came with two small jeeps. And as they were turning around, they got into the quarter, and the jeeps would not move anymore. And we surrounded them. Then. We had a row, but there was no fighting in the left So I decided that, look, enough is enough. So I joined. Because the way the country was going, it was unacceptable. When you sat your common entrance, how did you come? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, this was in 1978, and I got 318. What was the highest mark? The highest mark I was told.
was 3.19 or 3.20. And uh, I think...